Well, what's going on internet? IG here again today, and we're looking at Neptune OS 4.2. Uh, now Neptune is a Debian based distribution and uh, and as you can see if we dig into the repos here on the KDE desktop You can see in the software sources here We've got different Debian based repositories and also of course Neptune's own repository uh, Now obviously you can come in here and change the server um, as it's as what is going to be most ideal for you So for me, I'm in Australia and I'm going to choose the internode mirror if it does exist And if it doesn't then I'll just go with this one here or that one there and now you can see it's running out and grabbing the updates that are available from the different repositories including the Debian repositories and also Neptune's own repositories okay so let's talk a little bit about what this distribution is about essentially this distribution aims to be a relatively stable desktop friendly KDE distribution and it is kind of themed and presented as such so starting out with just the look and feel of this distribution, it definitely gears itself to be very kind of clean and user friendly, especially for KDE. But that's really saying something because generally speaking, KDE has a lot going on, um, but they've really trimmed it back here and, and it almost has a bit of an elementary-esque feel to it apart from the fans of blue icon set they've got going on here as well. Very bland wallpaper, obviously, trying to keep things as minimalist as possible. Um, but even the monochrome icons down here in the system tray are really nice. And as always, they do a pretty good job of bundling in some pretty nice wallpapers here to spice up your desktop with, so that's not bad at all. Now, in case you're wondering about the overall sluggishness of this desktop, it is because I'm running it off the live CD in VirtualBox. Now, you might be asking me, why on earth am I doing that? Because that is the worst way to review a Linux distribution. And I agree with you. I hardly ever do it this way. Unfortunately, I seem to be coming up against a bit of a bug in VirtualBox that I couldn't actually get it to install without it doing a kernel panic on its first boot. And uh, I just don't have the time to mess around with it, so I'm just going to do it off the live CD. Um, but yes, I have installed this on actual hardware as well, um, and, uh, and I've loved it, hence why I'm reviewing it. Um, and it's just easier for me to review it inside VirtualBox because that way you get a vanilla install rather than the one that I've tweaked out. Anyway, enough about that. What do you get by default in the uh, in Neptune OS 4.2? Well, essentially, you get a you get a handful of applications that help make uh, the general desktop user user's life a bit easier. So you get the contact suite along with LibreOffice, um, all of the um, all of the standard utilities, utilities and accessories that come with KDE. You also get ICT, the Java plugins, out of the box, which is a nice addition that not many distributions are doing nowadays. And you also get a handful of graphics tools, including the GIMP. And it's interesting how they've labeled them according to what they do rather than the name of the application. And that's always a very much a plus in my book, as the applications in their respective categories are titled by what they actually do, not by what their names are. So on internet, you've of course got pretty much all the tools you could want there, including instant messaging, BitTorrent, network analyzing, mail clients, the best open source browser out there, and of course a few feed readers, and also your IRC chat rooms. Under multimedia, you've got a pretty good selection here as well, including an audio player, the Ardour Digital Audio Workstation, which I do like the inclusion of. It is very much a professional level application, but it has a lot going on for it. And it's great to see that this, um, this distribution has embraced it as a default application for uh, their distribution as well I've got to be honest some of these some of these applications that are available as a part of the free software community uh, on different Linux distributions don't get the exposure that they deserve so Ardour is a fantastic digital audio workstation um, so it's good to see that that is included by default um, also under multimedia we have desktop recording we have audio encoding disk burning video editing with Kaden live you'll have to excuse my cough there that was a bit weird we also have a couple of media players and also a YouTube video downloader which is a pretty nice inclusion even if it is a bit sketchy on the legal side we also have inclusion of hedge wars there for a bit of fun and then of course all your system utilities including a snapshot manager now the snapshot manager works in conjunction with the BTRFS file system and basically it is a very similar idea from what the OpenSUSE desktop has in terms of having a snapshot manager that you can roll back to various snapshots of your system uh, should anything go wrong in the process of an update or just in just for files files and folders in general so obviously this is courtesy of the technology that's available in ButterFS as a file system to be able to roll back to previous versions of the file system. So it's all pretty amazing stuff. It's good to see the inclusions that they've made in those particular tools. 
as it kind of helps to give this distribution a bit more value on its own as a freestanding distribution. And obviously being based on Debian, it's not going to be going anywhere anytime soon and it's not going to be subject to any company's uh, weird, I guess, demands. They also feature back in time as another backup utility, uh, which is a bit more user friendly in my opinion than the, uh, than the snapper tool that you use to go back uh, with the BTRFS snapshots. But just the fact that they have included a couple of backup options out of the box, it's a good place to start, especially in a modern OS nowadays where we like to have our data safe and secure. Um, now in terms of the version numbers that you are running here out of the box, you do have KDE 4.14 and obviously that will then roll to KDE 4.14 point whatever it is uh, by the time you actually end up installing all the updates. Uh, now in the notification center here in KDE, it's alerted me that there are 109 different updates that I can install, so that's all good and well. And I must comment that boot time and also general performance, it's definitely not evident in this video because of the circumstances under which I'm recording, but on native hardware, this distribution absolutely flies, especially for KDE. Uh, I was very surprised by the fact um, by the fact that it was not sloppy at all. Applications were launching instantly, the transitions were very smooth, and the and KDE was really seeming to get out of the way. Where generally speaking, it seems to be kind of the the slower, more animated desktops out of uh, out of all of the different desktop environments that there are. Um, but yeah, definitely Plasma 4.14 was flying along on native hardware and also I think the theming might help with this. They kind of tone back a few of the visual elements of KDE. Um, so these are all good inclusions that just help to make a very nice traditional user oriented um, uh, yeah, desktop distribution. So who am I recommending this for? Well, pretty much anybody who likes KDE and anybody who likes Debian. They've got a lot of speed and simplicity in those two words. Um, so basically, if you are wanting a desktop distribution that's going to stay the way it should be, it's not going to screw around with you at all. It's just going to do what you want and have plenty of applications available. Obviously, installing extra software is done through APA, um, which is the KDE software installation suite. Kind of looks a little bit like the Ubuntu Software Center from the 1004 period. And you can see here, if we just go into a particular category, you've got your different, uh, you've got your different selections there of, uh, of different packages that are available. And obviously you can throw filters on that and, uh, and also use search terms. Now obviously it's not the prettiest, but if you're going to install a Debian based distribution, chances are you already know what you're doing. So you're going to be right in that regard. Well, definitely let me know what you think about this distribution in the comments below. And uh, I'm actually quite a fan of it, to be honest. I'm looking for a distribution that is, uh, that's both snappy and going to be staying relatively up to date, but not at the expense of stability. These are all good things to have in your repertoire as an operating system. So would you install this as your daily driver considering it's Debian heritage? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you see here and you want to see more, then click on the subscribe button. Uh, also, the annotations will be floating around on the upper right hand corner of your screen, I think it is. As always, you can catch me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. But that'll be all from me today, and I will see you in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.